It's October 1962. Uganda's Prime Minister Apollo Milton Obote embarks on a historical journey to the United States. Now, little did he know that this trip would change the course of Uganda's history. His entry included notable figures like John Kakwange, the Secretary General of the UPC Party, Jimmy Simpson, his Minister of Economic Affairs, and Grace Ewingira, his Minister for Justice, to mention a few. Now, during this visit, Obote had the opportunity of visiting the White House and meeting with the U.S. President John F. Kennedy. But the significance of this journey didn't end there. A ceremony was held at the UN Convention Center where Uganda was formally inducted as a member of the United Nations, marked by the raising of the Ugandan flag and Obote making a speech at the UN General Assembly. But a few blocks away is a building that would soon become the official Ugandan embassy to the United States dubbed the Uganda House as we know it today. But wait a moment, among this very historical entry was a man who played a pivotal role in acquiring and establishing of that particular building, Apollo K. Chironde, Uganda's first ambassador to the United Nations. In this episode of Uganda in History, we dive into the life, rise and legacy of Apollo Chironde, a man who left under the mark on Uganda's history. Apollo Chironde was born to Asenesio Senteza and Blaudina Chironde in 1915 in Uganda region. Asenesio Senteza, Apollo's father, had a remarkable lineage of his own. He was the son of none other than the legendary premier of the Uganda kingdom, Sir Apollo Kagwa. This lineage added another layer of richness to Apollo Chironde's heritage, making him the grandson of Sir Apollo Kagwa. Apollo Chironde embarked on an education journey that would shape his destiny. After completing his secondary education at King's College Budo, he continued on his quest for knowledge at Makerere University. But that wasn't the end of his academic journey. He later went on to the University of Fort Hare, where he would study alongside notable figures like Nelson Mandela, the future president of South Africa, and Charles Ojonju, one of the founding fathers of Kenya. After his time in South Africa, Apple Chironde briefly returned to his homeland Uganda, but the story doesn't end there. He packed his bags once again, but this time bound for London. In 1952, he received a prestigious call for the Honorable Society of the Middle Temple, inviting him to the bar. London was a pivotal point in his life, setting the stage for what would come next. Upon returning home from London, Apollo Chironde made a significant impact in the realms of education. He briefly ventured into teaching at King's College Budo, where he had the opportunity to mold a new generation of freedom fighters. Among these were Abu Mayanja and Mayanja Ankaji, and many more others that would come on to play a critical role in the Uganda struggle for independence. But that's not all. Apollo Chironde also ventured into the world of law. He established a law firm, and this wasn't just any law firm. It was located at Salbaris Road, now known as Nkuruma Road, and he collaborated with numerous Ugandan partners, leaving his lasting legacy in the legal arena. In 1945, Chironde took a significant step in his personal life as well. He married Santa Chironde from the Bakaluba clan, and together they were blessed with two children, Kadumukasa Chironde and Katiti, who now resides in the US. However, life had more chapters in store for Apple Chironde. He later on went to marry Miss Althea Hauskins in the US and had a family with her, allegedly having another family in the Britain. In the early 1950s, a political turmoil was brewing between the Buganda Kingdom and the British government. Tensions were high, and the Kabaka, Edward Mutesa, had a bold demand, the secession of Buganda from the larger parts of Uganda. This situation escalated to a point where the Kabaka found himself in exile in Britain, all or suggested by the governor, Andrew Cohen. Now let's fast forward to 1953, a year that would play a pivotal role in Apollo Chironde's life. After numerous discussions within the Buganda administration, Apollo Chironde, along with Thomas Makumbi, Iridadu Murira, and Dr. Anais Kalibala were appointed to a special delegation. Their mission was to negotiate the return of the Kabaka from exile. This was not just a small task. It involved dedicated negotiations and intricate diplomacy. But Apollo Chironde's involvement didn't stop there. He played a crucial role in the Hancock Constitutional Commission, a body that tackled the intricate constitutional issues between Buganda and the rest of Buganda. These were historical moments that would shape the future of the region. 
1955, he achieved another milestone in his political journey. Abel Chironde was elected as the member of the Legislative Council. Now here, this is what makes the moment truly remarkable. This position had historically been reserved exclusively for the white British. It was a significant breakthrough and Abel Chironde's election marked a turning point to the political landscape of the time. But there's more to the story. When he was nominated for this position in the Legislative Council, he found himself among several other notable figures from the Buganda region. It was a testament to his growing influence and a trust placed in him by the community. Soon after, he was appointed as the Assistant Minister for Planning in the colonial government. This was a pivotal role where he joined ranks of distinguished Ugandans, breaking more barriers along the way. Approach Chironde's political journey was nothing short of a rollercoaster ride. He was a member of the Uganda National Congress Party, UNC, where he served as a legal advisor. In 1957, he worked tirelessly but unfortunately couldn't prevent the party from splitting into factions. This division gave birth to the United Congress Party and later the Uganda People's Congress, led by none other than Apollo Milton Dogote. It was a time of intense political ferment with small parties forming and constantly splitting. In 1959, Apollo Chironde made a bold move. He resigned from government to rejoin politics once again, but this time through the Uganda Nationalist Party. In this new phase, he joined forces with Ignatius Kangavi Mosazi, EMK Molira, who had recently returned from exile in Bulu, where they had been rusticated by the colonial government. But here is where it gets more intriguing. A group of Uganda intellectuals with limited support within the Buganda region formed the Democratic Party DP which gained significant backing in the majority of the Bantu-speaking regions. In the run-up to the 1961 elections, Uganda, at the request of the Kabaka and his parliament, boycotted the elections. Consequently, Apollo Chironde decided also not to take part in active politics during that time. But some speculate that had Uganda not boycotted the elections, Chironde would have been a formidable figure in the Legislative Council. However, in 1962, the Kabaka forged an alliance with the Uganda People's Congress UPC, leading to their victory in the elections and securing the majority in parliament. It's believed by some that Chironde never forgave the Buganda Kingdom for its role in handing over power to Obote. Now, after attainment of self governance in 1961, Obote made a significant move. He appointed Apollo Chironde as the first Ugandan ambassador to the United Nations in New York. Chironde also became the one of the initial members of the Uganda Legislative Council. However, his tenure in the council was relatively short-lived and spanning just five years. Now, during his time at the United Nations, Apollo Chironde played a crucial role in advising the Ugandan government at the time to secure a permanent resident for the Ugandan ambassador in New York. As a result, Chironde oversaw the purchase of a remarkable resident in New York. The five-storage house nestled between Park and Livingstone Avenue had previously been belonged to the famous U.S. actor Anthony Quinn and costed around $250,000. But the story doesn't end there. In 1971, Idi Amin, then in power, issued an order for the construction of the Ugandan house in New York. This iconic building now serves as the resident of the Ugandan ambassador to the United States. It was a significant development in Uganda's diplomacy. After an eventful five years tenure at the United Nations, Apollo Chironde's career took another turn. It's a move that has a tinge of intrigue to it. You see, President Apple Milton Obote decided to appoint Otema Almadi as Chironde's deputy at the United Nations. Now here is where the catch comes in. It was rather uncommon practice for the UN ambassador to have a deputy. When Almadi assumed his role, Chironde, the seasoned diplomat that he was, understood the signal and stepped aside carefully. But Chironde's journey didn't end there. He transitioned into the role of the director of the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. It was another chapter in his illustrious career marked by his dedication to international diplomacy. His service in this capacity lasted for five years and it was a period of continued commitment to the United Nations and its mission. After his remarkable service in international diplomacy, Apple Chironde retired to New York, severing the city's bursting energy. However, life had more in store for him. In 1971, a seismic shift occurred in Uganda's political landscape when Field Marshal Idi Amin Dada overthrew Obote's regime. Abel Chironde made his return to Uganda, where he took on a significant role as the Minister for Planning in the newly established military government. His initial assessment upon taking over office was far from optimistic. Chironde reported that his ministry had quite literally nothing in the kitty. 
the economic challenges facing Uganda were so substantial with the budget deficit of about £2 million in 1970. These financial woes persisted in the subsequent years, making a systematic economic planning a formidable challenge. In a twist of fate, Chironde's journey in the government took another unexpected turn. He was appointed as the Minister of Tourism, a role he fulfilled with dedication. Yet, there was a certain misery surrounding the eventual retirement from this position alongside other ministers like Abu Mayanja. Now, the economic struggles continued to cast a shadow over Uganda, making the task of comprehensive planning and development incredibly challenging. Apollo Chironde's life journey had by this point been marked by numerous twists and turns, reflecting on the tumultuous events which he had lived in. Now, during the 1970s, Apollo Chironde ventured into the world of business by founding the Action Motors, a car dealership that would leave a lasting mark on his legacy. His business secured a highly profitable deal to distribute Mercedes-Benz cars in Uganda, an opportunity that had previously been held by D.T. Doby, a regional dealer at the time. This remarkable achievement showcased Chironde's acumen in both entrepreneurship and diplomacy. Now, as the political tide shifted once again and Amin's government fell from power, Chironde decided to diversify his pursuits. He turned his attention back to his law farm and dived into jaggery and dairy farming in Kasagomba and Nakaseke, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to his various endeavors. In 1986, Apollo Chironde's expertise once again was called upon when he was appointed to the Commission of Inquiry. This commission was to investigate the mismanagement of funds from the World Bank International Development Agency, particularly concerning the allocations to schools during the Obote II regime. Now, Chironde's dedication to accountability and governance was evident throughout this role. In 1987, he embarked on yet another chapter in his life journey by settling in Britain. There, he established an anti-establishment campaign after solidifying his reputation as a man of action and principle. Apple Chironde's story is a testament to resilience, adaptability, and unwavering commitment to making a difference, no matter where life twists and turns may lead him. Now, Apple Chironde's remarkable journey took him to the international odyssey, yet he always found his way back to the place he called home. In 1997, he returned to Uganda seeking the quietude of his Mango resident, where he continued to enrich the tapestry of his life. Now, tragically, on the 25th of April 2007, at the age of 92, Apollo Chironde's extraordinary life came to an end at Mango's hospital. He left behind a profound legacy, surviving through 15 children and a multitude of grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. Now, his impact on Uganda transcended his years and he wore many hearts, teachers, lawyers, and diplomats. Chironde's commitment to the betterment of his homeland was undeniable. He played an instrumental role in the establishment of Molago Hospital, shaping its plan and design. Interestingly, his inspiration for the hospital's layout was drawn from the Ibadan University Medical Teaching Hospital, showcasing his visionary thinking. Now, as we reflect on Apple Chironde's life, it is impossible not to acknowledge his enduring contribution to Uganda's development. His legacy even extends furthermore, as his daughter, Katiti Chironde, and her place in history as the first African-American cover girl of the Glamour Woman's magazine. Apple Chironde's journey was none other than resilience, dedication, and a deep love for his country, a story that will forever echo in the annals of Uganda's history. If you found this video informative and engaging, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. This has been Regan for Uganda in History, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.